Welcome to Attic Raiders Retro Reviews, where today we're looking at the vintage board game, Monster Mania. Now, I say it's a board game, but there's no game board, so maybe it's not. Uh, it is an electronic game, though. Uh, this one, Monster Mania, was made in 1986 by GT Action. And GT Action are one of the big players that have quite a lot of electronic games during this time period. A lot of games with moving parts and quite intricate machinery and mechanisms. As a child growing up in the 1980s, all about the monsters. So anything with monster in the title, definitely going to appeal. Monster Mania is a really, really hard game, actually. Uh, not so much to do with monsters. Monster themed, but could really have been themed anything, but it's the 80s, 90s, monsters are big, let's go with monsters. Monster Mania, the mad monster game, it's monstrously funny. Not sure how it's funny, but it's good fun, it's hard. Use your monster claws to pick up the whirling marbles. Drop the marbles into your monster. First to complete their monster wins. Now you can see that this is quite an early production version of this game. One of the ways we can tell that is the photograph on the front. The game here is not quite the finished article that is in the box. These earlier production monster heads here, you can see that they've got printed details on them. These little kind of bubbly circles on the red and the green head. And then on the robot type head, there's kind of more squares and rectangles, kind of rivet details. The game's monster claws here also differ from the finished product. You can see the end that you would use to push in to release the balls is a lot thinner here with no kind of wide point at the end. Uh, so it'd be much harder for little fingers to use. As I said, this is the original 1986 release by Action GT that I have here. But this game was later re-released by a company called Kidworks. I don't have an exact year for that, I've not been able to find any photographs with a copyright date. But I do know that that version is later. Because the photo on the front shows the monster claws with the wider plunger at the end and the monster heads don't have any of the white printing on them. So this is the actual production model that's in this photograph. These guys definitely look like they're concentrating hard and I think for this game you really do have to concentrate. Let's take a closer look. The main game unit itself is literally a plastic yellow bowl and this is quite a strong sturdy plastic that this is made from thankfully. Uh, and that's held within this unit, which again is quite strong, and it's got some user applied stickers. Uh, in this case, thankfully, they've been put on quite well. The sticker artwork shows the same monsters that the monster head ball holders represent. This one is called Ugg, and you can see he's some kind of hairy little dragon with arms sprouting out the side of his head from the looks of things. And then we have Wiz, and he looks like some cheery little goblinoid kind of creature with strange tendrils sprouting out of his chin. Zog is some kind of dinosaur fishman kind of thing. Definitely the meanest looking of the bunch. Lastly, we have Dag, and he kind of looks like some kind of messed up robot more than a monster. He's got three eyes, and is that an exposed brain? And he's covered in metal plating. Just what's going on there? Now, I suppose this artwork has a naive 60s, 70s kind of appeal to it, but I'm just not really a fan. Considering that because of the monster theme, they could have had anything that their imaginations could have come up with. If they'd just gone for some kind of artwork, like in Ghost Castle, for instance, it could have been absolutely amazing. As it is, I'm just not sold. Now, once you've decided which monster face you're going to use, you're then going to try and collect that colour of ball. Now that is completely unlike what's shown on the front cover of the box. In that photograph, the player with the blue face is putting red balls onto it, the player with the red face is putting green balls onto it, the player with the green face is putting orange balls onto it, and so on. But that obviously just doesn't make sense. I think that's just from a photography point of view, it's easier for those different colour of balls to show up against the faces. When you're actually playing this game, if you're the orange monster, Ugg, you're going to collect the orange balls. If you are Dag, the red 
robot more than a monster I think then you're going to collect the red balls if you are whiz you're going to collect green balls and if you're zog you're going to collect blue balls each player is trying to collect six of their color of ball unfortunately on this one here I'm actually missing a red ball and this is where I think the game designers have missed a trick if they had made the balls instead of just normal balls if they'd made those into eyeballs and designed the faces so that each one of the holes was an eye socket then I think that would be much better from a design standpoint um, and it would make it more fun. I mean who doesn't love collecting monster eyeballs? Now unlike the actual game board which is made from a really thick sturdy plastic these monster heads are made from quite a thin vac formed plastic in order to get the detail and the shape. Now unfortunately because of that on some of the high points here it means that the plastic can get very thin and particularly as this game is so old you've got to watch that it doesn't crush. If likes of here and here and here they've been crushed and I've had to carefully push them back out um, and they've gone slightly discoloured so be careful if you're getting one of these games that uh, it's not got cracks or holes in some of these high points here. In order to pick up the balls, each player has their own monster claw which matches the colour of the balls and the head that they are playing with. To pick up the ball using the monster claw, we hold it kind of like a pencil and we just have to dab down on top of the ball. And to get rid of it, we press in the end like a plunger. Of course, rather than firing them across the room, you're going to be putting them into your monster head. You can pick them up, put them in. Now, that looked easy, but once the game's going, it's anything but. If we take a look at the main unit here, this top piece just pops off, and then inside we've just got a very, very simple circuit. There's a space here for a battery and this one takes a C battery, so we put that in there. And this circuit is just from the battery, goes round via an on off switch to a motor in here and then back round to the battery here. So when we take the motor switch and switch it on, it switches on the motor. So we just make sure that that piece is put back into place with the switch coming through the mouth. You can see that underneath the mechanism here there's just a very simple propeller which is connected to that motor spindle so that when we switch the motor on we get some high speed rotation. And now if I add some of the balls into the game Okay, now let's have a go. Got my monster claw. Now this is a lot harder than it looks.
Давай. Come on. 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 But I really love the monsters theming. Anything with monsters in it is going to be a good board game. But it's not really relevant to the game itself. The monster theming though is really just stickers and shaped ball holders. It could have been anything at all. They could have gone with any theme. They could have had unicorn stickers, a jungle animal sticker, fairies, all kinds of things on there. And it could have just been anything at all. But monsters is where the money's at. Kids in the 80s and 90s loved monsters. I'm all grown up now and I still love monsters. So for me, that's what got my attention. A tricky game and one you've really got to concentrate on to play, especially watching those balls as they pop and zip around that board all over the place. But definitely one that's worth checking out and having a go. Until next time, this is Attic Raiders Retro Reviews.